Happy Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I'm in the process of taking the diff off. Um, so the problem with this diff was it's a Triumph Saloon diff. So it's 3.45 to 1 uh, ratio, which uh, I put on when this car was automatic. It never really changed it when I put the car to a manual gearbox, which was yonks ago. Um, then I rebuilt it and realised the back plate doesn't line up, so I stuck some plastic gloop over the hole, which is all well and good, but it looks like the expansion between the two metals has caused the uh, liquid inside to escape. Now, exhaust has all come off, nice stainless system on this car, it's been on it. It was on it since before I bought the car, that's 30 years ago. Um, still going strong. Uh, big bore tail pipes. The only thing that's happened on it is the hook for the uh, rear hanger has broken off. So it's now got a <laughs> it's now got an exhaust clamp there. Um, my car, my rules. So really, I need to take the two uh, drive shafts off. Just unbolt them at the inner end there. Uh, undo the four bolts around the diff nose. Undo the two nuts on the cradle um, and lower the thing down. Not gonna video it all, it's just basic spannering. So four bolts here on the drive shafts. You can turn the drive shafts, or you should be able to turn the drive shafts fairly easily. Oh, I think we might have found a seized wheel here. Um, I haven't got the handbrake on, as you can see. Uh, drum might need to come off. Uh, yes, so once the half shafts are off, then I can, uh, as I say, undo the four bolts around the front end there. You can see this is one of the diffs that's been reinforced. Diff noses, I should say, that's been reinforced. And then this can come down. Right, there we go, that's one drive shaft off. Dead easy. Uh, that drum is rotating okay. While we're here, we'll also... Right, well, there's a universal joint absolutely shot in there somewhere. Hear it? Actually, it might be the splines. It is the splines. Push it in. Take it out. Drive sharp might be a bit on the tired side. <laughs> right, no more problems, Richard. Let's do this side next. Um, there's not enough room for the camera under here. So I'm afraid you have to wait out there. Here I am. Hello. Lighting is appalling under here. I can't do much about that, I'm afraid. Um, so, I've undone three of the four bolts around the front of the diff. You can't get to the fourth one until the whole thing is lowered down. Uh, next, I need to undo these two mountings on the diff back plate. So just undo those. Make sure you are supported. Um, once they're off, I can lower the jack and the whole diff will come down along with the uh, forward edge of the subframe. This is why you need to have the thing off the floor. You can't do this thing. <laughs> Um, on the, yeah, with the wheels on the floor because the rear end of the diff is actually part of the rear kind of suspension geometry. With the diff out of the way, the subframe just drops down too far. There's a lot of kind of surface rust under it though. I've been noticing. I think once this is back up and running, things can get a proper good clean off and treatment under here. That seam seal peeling away over there. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, okay. Right, I don't know if you can see or not. Um, I can. But having undone that fixing, what I'm looking for is my 7 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths. That'll do. Lowering the jack now, and it should lower. You can see the diff coming down. Here comes the diff. You can also see the rear subframe is also coming down I want to lower this until it's more or less clear right okay that's now supported on the trolley jack I need to get under here and I do the top bolt oh yes like a stubby spanner. I'm going to need a stubby spanner. Oh, you shit. Right. And that bolt 
is off. And now, see the diff now rotates against the stand. Now, realistically, I need this thing to lower down a bit more, but I've got a pin, the soft frame isn't going to allow it to. I'll just come down a fair bit more. Just try and get it off. Ow. Mind your fingers. Are we coming off? Just thinking about it. I want this to come backwards. Here it comes. It's a bit fat candy, folks. It's probably a lot easier on a ramp, I guess. Right, let me get my torch out of the way because I don't want to crush the torch. It's actually, there it comes, it's the cup that goes into the diff nose is uh give me some grief there right this dip rest it on the jack lower the jack down I'll do it and then we can pull this okay. there we go. one dip Piece of piss. Right, let's get the back plate put across onto the other one. And then I can uh, put the other one straight back in. You can see here, four nuts. There's lock tabs. I've got nylocks on the other one. We'll see if that's any better. That could probably do with a bit of a coat, couldn't it? With a coat of paint. Um, do I do that tomorrow? Take that to unit with me, sort it out tomorrow, give it a damn good clean up um, and, and de-rust and put it back on again. I think I might do that rather than rushing to put this diff back on, knowing that that is a problem. <clears throat> right. Not a lot more I could do now, apart from take those tabs off. Okay, so diff went back on, nothing particularly nasty there. Uh, Pretty straightforward bolting up to be honest. Um, all I really do with it is position the diff below the stub where it needs to go to, get underneath with a bit of brute force, lift it up into place, put it onto the stub axle, then put the jack underneath to hold it in place. Once you've got the four bolts done up between the diff nose and the differential, then you can push it up and onto its mountings. Um, yeah, like I say, fairly straightforward bolting. It was pitch black while I was doing it, so I couldn't really video much. Battery? Dead. Um, I did check on this. I bought this about nine years ago. Um, it's an HBO 71 from Halfords. Only got a three year guarantee on it. They don't do that battery anymore, but they do do. If I can get in here, because I couldn't pull it out again. It moves now, so the brakes aren't seized. I bought an HBO 6, HCBO 69, which is actually. I think it's an HBO 7-2. Um, don't worry too much about the numbers on this. This is a Halfords numbering system. So don't get bogged down uh, with, um, oh, I must get an HBO 7-2. Get whichever manufacturer you choose will have the uh, battery, excuse me, hickety up it will have the battery correct for the vehicle. Now, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to drive it out. There is a reason why I leave it in my garage with the roof down um, partly to keep the caps cats off the roof but also uh, I can't get in and out of it <laughs> I think ultimately the hard top will move up to my unit um, so let's see where we are fuel pump sounds a bit more urgent let's see if it starts Hello, daylight. 
So the brakes are still a little bit on the uh, stiff side, but I've managed to loosen them all off. I just think there is a level of corrosion on each of the uh, discs and drums. Seems happy enough though, doesn't it? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the windows off I'm going to go and put some fuel in it. Um, and then when I know it's working, I'll give it a bloody good clean. I need water to fix up um, the overflow bed pipe I'll change. Um, and there's a couple of other bits that really need doing. I found out where I got these from. These car brushes I bought nearly a decade ago from the gauge shop. Thanks, Alan. Nearly a decade ago. Look at that. Still going strong. I appreciate it's done fuck all in the last four years. Not a lot wrong with that, is there? I hope. Um, this corner bumper, though, I might have to invest in a set of stainless bumpers. Um, we'll see where we go with that. It's a bit grubby, though, isn't it? It's a bit grubby. But that's rock solid, considering that fuel is four years old. Choking a little bit. Just over 40 psi of fuel pressure, which is good. I don't know so easily. Right, old rust coming through down there. Scuff there, look at that. Right, let's have a clear up because I think it's about to get biblical. I might actually just put the hood up and let it rain on it. It's not going to do it too much harm, is it? That's a uh, hood that's fitted by Jim from South East Trimming. A very, very, very long time ago. Dusty. I'll tell you what, it still fits like a glove. Uh, it just needs to get a little bit on the damp side because obviously the fabric has shrunk in the four years since I last managed an erection. Right. Yeah, we are uh, running a bit on the lean side. <sighs> right, let's get a bucket of soapy water and clean those windows off. And I think we're going to go out and get some fuel. I don't know if you've noticed, but my car is actually white. <laughs> Better check things out. Indicators and so forth are working.
Oh no. Nothing there. <laughs> It'll be the back of the um, indicator plunger that's causing the problem. Bulb's gone there. I've got to get in there and sort all this out. So we've got right indicator. Probably could do with a little bit of choke, couldn't we, really? Idle speed, just a little bit on the low side. Or we're idling about 400 RPM. Now, if your indicators don't work, your best thing to do is wiggle this switch in and out. Beam's working. Indicators are not. I'll have those working in a second. Lights. I couldn't tell you if the lights are working. It's going to actually all be one fuse, couldn't it, really? Ah, the lights working. Yes, we've got lights. Uh, we've got the lights. We haven't got main lights. We've only got side lights. I expect we're going to find there's a fuse box somewhere. Might have to get the, uh, the old vomiter out. Yes, I'm going to need to check headlights, indicator fuses and so forth. I think I'm going to be vomiter and I can start checking through the various circuits. But uh, around with the fuses, literally just checking the voltage across the fuses, um, and oh we got headlights, marvellous. Um, I think it's going to be dodgy earths and so forth, all of this needs to be crash washed out. Um, it's going to be dodgy earths or so forth. see if we can't get Mr. Indicator working. Just get hazard lights working first and foremost because then we know that everything no yeah, that's working. <laughs> I was just about to give that a thump then and it's like no 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 let's, let's not give it a thump let's just see. So we've got side dip main indicators oh, sorry hazards all round. Now, have we got indicators? I don't think we have. Not a lot on the indicator front, is there? So I'm going to need to find the uh, flashing unit under here and see if we've got voltage to the flashing unit. So the flashing unit is up here somewhere, tucked away. Um, I might go and get a cup of coffee. That works. Does the wipers work? Washers work? Shouldn't scraping on that side is not very good, is it? Intermittent work? Part works. It's all very nice, isn't it? Intermittent does work. So it's not a million miles away, and the problem I'm going to have with these indicators, it's going to be likely to be there. Quick rinse off. Um, aside from the obvious, there's quite a few little dimples and dinks. That probably will come off. That does come off. That'll come off again in a minute. But, uh, 
but these must be grinder sparks that are carried on the wind. Now that will come off there. It has. It's just like I used a uh, quite heavy duty TFR type product um, just to try and get the worst of it off. The bumpers are going to get replaced. Um, that was where someone very kindly touched parked me a few years ago and you see the rust has come right the way through on it now. Um, there's a bubble of rust there for some reason. Travis, I'm going to take it into state of the body and he's going to say, for fuck's sake, most of this stuff I'm going to polish out. I should better just polish these small marks out. Uh, just very, very, very localised areas. I'm going to do that tomorrow. What I'm going to do now is go and get some fuel. You know what that means, don't you? I'll fix the indicators. Do you know what? Really helps when it comes to indicators. Having an indicator flasher unit. So obviously been robbed out at some point. Not very helpful, Richard. Right, need to... Where are we? And look, indicators. <laughs> Makes all the difference when it's not been robbed out, doesn't it? Right, okay, what I might need to do is just go over the windscreen, because it is a bit grubby. Right, I've just logged 50 quid's worth of um, feed, power, shell, super unleaded. And now I really need to um, be emptying the float chambers out and getting the fresh fuel through. But, this time, Test the diff bloke. Is the air dry working? No. <laughs> the windows are stopped working. Oh no, windows are working now. Windows stopped working, now they're working. <coughs> Just want to do a couple of miles um, and see if we can't get it to. <coughs> Temperature is currently about 70 degrees. Oil pressure at 45. Battles, plumps. <coughs> Cough. Right, we should have the carbs now, should be running with decent fuel. The idle's a lot smoother. Sorry, the Eiffel Tower's in the way. Now with the new diff on there, it's a lot easier pulling away in first gear. Still, I mean, I'm running 1500 RPM, 
40 psi of oil pressure just crept up to 80 celsius i can't remember what um, thermostat i've got in this bear in mind that the temperature reading is from the back of the cylinder head and not the thermostat housing so it's not necessarily going to record the exact temperature the thermostat opens somewhat stupid About that. Me too. I managed to clean this bumper up by the way. It didn't go too badly. Um, yes, touch park, touch park. Thanks very much, that chaps. Overrider came up all right. All I did was uh, I ran some uh, very fine steel wool over it with a bit of WD 40 and it's cleaned the worst of it up. Wheels need refurb. But I got these on my 40th birthday and I am 56 and a half so they're not done bad but they need a refurb and the front bumper came up all right too it's going to get changed at some point but I'm pleased that something happened with it because it's a lot better than it was and I notice I'm missing the little triumph badge out of there don't know where that went right so I'm going to crack on changing these fuel lines there's nothing particularly complicated with it um, as I say, I've done the lines up here. These haven't come through in time, so I've just taped up the breather pipes. Um, just really going over, just making sure that it's going to be in a fit state. And then I think once I've done this trip, we're going to go about restoring this engine bay. I shall serialise that. There will be a whole series of episodes about me sorting this engine bay out because it is a shambles the other thing i want to do today is to pressure test that thing because there's a leak somewhere and i have a nasty feeling it is from the seal or between that and the lip in here because that's normally where i found this particular device to have leaked in the past um, so i'll pressurize the system and we'll see where we go to Okay, um, fuel lines. I've replaced the fuel line up here. There's another fuel line down here that runs off the bottom of the inline fuel filter and connects onto this pipe, which should be strapped onto the bulkhead down here. Now, it's important to know, and you can just about see it down here, on a lot of the cars, especially Mark II stags, there's a little short stubby section of pipe down there. Don't forget that one. Um, I've obviously replaced that reasonably recently, but I can see that the pipe is starting to crack, so it's going to get replaced again. Um, and yes, this is my car. <laughs> so don't worry about all this shit down here. This is going to get done at some point. Um, so yeah, don't forget that little short stubby section down there. I am just about to go down there and do that myself now. Seems like I caught that in time, didn't it? A couple of nasty cracks there whether they go right through or not I don't know um, I'm going to replace the line on this car from one end to the other um, partly because there is a big chunk of steel underneath the car um, on the fuel line and that was the other bit of fuel line that crack there is one I cut in order to get it off um, it's alive <laughs> So here's my handy little pressure test rig. Literally, it is a pressure cap. Same sort of dimensions, same sort of rubber. In fact, it's a little bit longer than that one. So we, we put that onto the expansion. Okay. And then we connect just a pump with a gauge on it. And we put some pressure into it. I got to about 10 or 15 PSI. Oh, well, that's leaky. 14. Down here. Right, watch. It's fucking good, though, isn't it? What a beautiful system. What a beautiful fucking piece of engineering that is. Um, I don't know what to do with it. I haven't got the pipe work to get rid of it. I think what I'm going to do um, is I'll carry a big can of water with me because the worst case scenario is that um, I will lose some coolant 
as I'm driving. Um, but this, that there would explain why this never reaches its full pressure. Which I've had that problem with this cap before, with this tank before. I thought I fixed it. Uh, we are running a 20 psi uh, pressure cap. Let's see if I've got another cap. Seals a bit better. Two uh, 15 pound caps. These are uh, Land Rover jobbies off early Range Rovers. And I've got another 20 pound cap. So this is going to be another 20 pound cap here. 20 pound. It's just shite, isn't it? Um, I'm wondering if I just bend the tabs over a little bit. You can see on this one, I've gone berserk bending the tabs over. It's made fuck all difference. It's because I think that the neck down here is too far below that, which is just shite. I'll take a boat full of caps and a bucket full of water and hope for the best. I think I haven't got fast travel. It's 10 degrees Celsius on average, so we shouldn't encounter a problem. But effectively, I'm not going to be running a full pressurised cooling system. I was thinking this little device here was supposed to fix your cooling system worries. Um, and yet it has failed miserably on us. Never mind. Shit happens. Um, I've got, unfortunately, got a funeral tomorrow. So those of you who knew him, Russ Crichton, um, it's his funeral tomorrow and I'm going to go and honour his life. she wants to cover her dad's car in oil. <laughs> Dennis, it's a Union flag, not a Union Jack, remember? 
Who would have put you right on that? Yeah, you would have done. Can you time this? Yes. We need a minute. So we've got a minute, gentlemen. Oh, I do need the other side then, so I'm going to leave that here for the outside waiting there. Can you liaise with Nicola about a minute? You've seen what come out of Muffies, have you? Those are smoking the works. Yeah, Russ. I reckon Muffies. We've got no bloody baffles in there. <laughs> oh dear. You just want to look at the oil trail behind the exhausts. Alright, up. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 